archaeologists are finding many objects and artifacts that indicate that our ancestors believed in alien life. Ancient philosophers and medieval scientists mentioned this more than once. I will tell you about the amazing and unique finds of archaeologists in this video. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Giant Had in the Aegean a team of European archaeologists and divers found a giant marble head during an underwater expedition at the site of the Antikythera shipwreck in the Aegean Sea. Researchers have identified the head as a Heracles of the Phanes type. According to them, it may belong to a headless statue of a demigod, which was found in the same place in 1900 during a shipwreck. The statue is currently kept in the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Two human teeth were also found embedded in a hard agglomerate with traces of copper genetic material that could be analyzed to determine the sex of the person they belong to. The researchers also found several other artifacts belonging to the ship, such as bronze, iron, and nails, but these can only be identified using X-rays. All items were handed over for conservation to the Ephorate of Underwater Antiquities of Greece. Early Iron Age Swords The swords were discovered during the construction of a new fire station in the Bavarian city of Andex. These items were funerary. Each sword was buried in a separate grave along with the remains. Swords represent an important transitional stage from the use of bronze to the use of iron in weapons. Both are made of iron, but the earlier one was made in the shape and style of a Bronze Age sword. The later one, made in the same period, had an adapted design to take advantage of the stronger and more stable metal. The swords are 76 and 66 cm long and 6 cm wide. While the shorter one was probably mainly used as a stabbing weapon in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the longer and heavier one was more suitable as a stabbing weapon that a fighter could wield from above, for example from a horse. At the Bavarian State Heritage Office in Munich, a team of restorers cleaned the swords using microfine shot blasting technology and examined them more closely. The restorers managed to find traces of a horn on one of the so-called Heltons, and the hilt was probably made from this material. Two blades also contained the remains of a layered linen weave fabric, as well as the remains of a cord that must have been wrapped around it in several places. Presumably, the the weapons were wrapped in cloth and buried. The oldest traces of human life in the Arctic Modern humans lived in the Arctic 40,000 years ago, at the beginning of the late Paleolithic. This was found out by examining the bone remains of animals found in the archaeological complex in the Lower Ob. It is believed that a man of the modern type ended up in Europe and Asia 50-60,000 years ago, but scientists do not know where he lived before and how he passed the Ural Range. For a long time, it was believed that in the period 12-30,000 years ago, the north of western Siberia was covered by a glacier, and therefore, it is pointless to look for our archaeological traces in this region. In 2020, at the Kushevet site, in the deposits of an ancient stream, a cultural horizon full of bones was discovered, stretching for tens of meters. The stream existed for 20-40,000 years, now it has shifted down several meters. There are interesting finds that archaeologists periodically date, in particular, two deer antlers with traces of processing were found. This is the first discovery in this region, indicating the presence of men in this area 40,000 years ago. To determine the age of the finds, scientists used the method of accelerator mass spectrometry. This is an ultra-sensitive method of isotopic analysis, in which a careful selection of the atoms of a substance is carried out with isotope counting. It allows you to date organic objects with an accuracy of up to 50 years. This work will allow us to understand the migration routes of people in the Paleolithic era and find out how people settled on the Earth. The Complex Language of Communication in Chimpanzees 
chimpanzees use a fairly rich language to communicate, the words of which they are able to combine into sentences. Experts from the Max Planck University of Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany found out. The researchers analyzed almost 5,000 conversation recordings, totaling about 900 hours, between adult chimpanzees in the Thai National Park in Côte d'Ivoire. They were able to isolate 390 unique vocal sequences. Although it was obvious before that the sounds made by chimpanzees carry certain information, such a wide range of vocalizations came as a surprise to scientists. Vocalizations were both single and combined into chains of several and combined in different ways. In total, scientists have identified 12 different types of vocalizations, including grunts, lowing, and whining. The use of vocalizations was influenced by the context. For example, a single grunt of a chimpanzee was published at the side of food, and a series of grunts more like a pent as a sign of a submissive greeting. Although the chimpanzee language is poorer than the human language, it turned out to be much richer and more diverse than previously thought. There are probably more possible combinations and sounds in it than we have been able to identify. Scientists hope that further research into the language of monkeys will help to learn more about the origin of language in humans. Prehistoric Swiss Knife South African archaeologists have found that Midstone Age African Howison sport type tools, which are functionally very similar to Swiss army knives, looked almost the same over vast expanses. This indicates that early humans actively exchanged information and communicated with each other. The tools of the Howison sport industry were produced in huge quantities over five millennia and were very perfect for their time. At a later time, there was a degradation of technology, and after some time, a new take off. The blades made 65 60,000 years ago were in many respects superior to the stone tools of the late Stone Age, which came only 25,000 years later. Numerous highly versatile blades have been used for many different purposes, including the use as hunting tools, hand thrown spears, and possibly also a bow and arrow, felling trees and branches, meat, bones, leather dressing, etc. At the same time, all the blades looked very similar and were made according to a uniform pattern throughout the south of the African continent. All this indicates that people of that time must have actively shared the secrets of their manufacture and other information with each other. That is, they were all then socially connected. Boa's jaw on the chest The school grotto is now in Israel. For centuries, shepherds kept goats in this grotto. Excavations began in 1928, and three years later, archaeologists found in the layers of the terrace in front of the grotto the skeletons of 10 ancient people, as well as more than 10,000 stone tools belonging to the Middle Paleolithic. The culture is similar to the Neanderthal. Eight male skeletons, two presumably female. All but one of the skeletons had bent legs. Intentional burials are suspected, although grave pits are not traceable. One of the iconic finds is two drilled shells, one of the oldest jewelry in the world. On the chest of the skeleton of school 5, between the arms, lay the lower jaw of a large boar. Sometimes they mistakenly write that it is clamped in the hand. Skeletons combine progressive archaic features. At various times, they were identified as Neanderthals, or as mestizos of Neanderthals with sapiens, now usually referred to as anatomically modern humans. Skull 5, male, 30, 45 years old. The skull is massive, the forehead is sloping, the brow is large, the face is low and very wide. The chin prominence is well defined, but the chin does not protrude. The man was tall, about 179 centimeters, and had equatorial body proportions. The teeth were badly worn, there was an abscess. In addition, this man suffered from rheumatoid arthritis of the mandibular joint. Finds from school have been repeatedly dated by different methods. Thus, in 1999, the age of about 119,000 years was obtained by the method of thermoluminescence. The paramagnetic resonance method gave dates of 81, 101,000 years. Family Mount in Denmark 
The remains of two or three people discovered in 1875 at the Boren Eshe burial mound in Chetland, Denmark, the finds belong to the Late Bronze Age. The remains were buried in oak coffins, which allowed them to be dated by annual rings, and are currently stored in the Muscard Museum. The burial was over 7 meters high and almost 38 meters in diameter. At one time, it was a large monumental building with several internal stone rooms, set in stones, and a stone fence built in steps. Probably it was used for a long time for religious purposes to commemorate the buried, who were highly respected by their fellow tribesmen. There were several burials in the large barrow, including three oak coffins, which were probably originally buried here. In the first burial, the oak is dated to approximately 1351 BC. The remains belong to a woman, 56 years old a man of the same age and a young man, 20-22 years old. Perhaps they were all relatives. The body of an elderly man is well preserved, even the muscles remained. The study showed that the buried was freshly shaven and even monitored the condition of the nails. The man lay on an ox skin and was covered with woolen blanket. The buried elderly woman was of small stature and heavy build. Analysis of the skeleton showed that she worked very hard. The young man was dressed in a woolen kilt, girded with a leather belt and shod in leather boots. He still has hair, probably cut under the pot. His burial is dated by the rings of the tree from which the coffin was carved to 1345 BC. Aliens in Antiquity the concept of aliens has been around for a very long time. Long before human civilization developed a scientifically based understanding of the cosmos, people around the world looked up into the sky above and wondered what was there. Some ancient societies inhabited these vast mysterious expanses with gods, being responsible for the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. In the past, people were also often persecuted for thinking differently. This was the case even in ancient Greece, despite the fact that it was famous for its innovative philosophers. When the philosopher Anaxagoras, who was trying to give a scientific explanation for such seemingly supernatural phenomena for those times as eclipses and rainbows, suggested the moon is not a god but a large stone and the sun is also a stone but hot, he was arrested and sentenced to death. Anaxagoras also considered the possibility that the moon might be habitable, which was a highly controversial suggestion, contradicting the dominant view of the cosmos as alpha outlined by Plato and Aristotle. The belief in the existence of other worlds was taken up by many philosophers, including Epicurus, who once wrote to the historian Herodotus that there are an unlimited number of cosmoses, and some of them are like ours, and some are not. This belief, however weak, was preserved in ancient Rome. Nothing in the universe is unique, wrote the Roman poet Lucretius, and therefore in other distant spaces there must be other other lands inhabited by various tribes of people and breeds of animals. Although Plato and Aristotle lived in a pre-Christian world, their ideas about the universe helped shape the doctrine of the Christian faith. In the Middle Ages, this belief proclaimed that the Earth was created by God as the center of the universe. The story of Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself to forgive the sins of men, established humanity as the most significant of all creations. If other Wolves existed, they could not be inhabited. After all, if they existed, it would automatically reduce the significance of the crucifixion. Dominican monk, mathematician, and cosmological theorist Giordano Bruno did not wait until his death to share ideas about the universe. In three dialects published between 1584 and 1591, Bruno suggested that some distant stars might be suns like ours that planets also revolve around these suns, and finally, that some of these planets may be inhabited by life similar to the Earth. These views irritated the church, and in addition, Bruno's interest in magic and the occult led to his arrest in 1592. Refusing to renounce heresy, he was burned at the stake after seven years of imprisonment and torture. Not all participants in the scientific revolution believed in the existence of aliens. Galileo, a devout Catholic, considered the talk of extraterrestrials blasphemous. 
British polymath William Viewell opposed the theory of many worlds, defending a special relationship between God and humanity. But oddly enough, his religiously motivated thesis, set forth 1853 book called On the Plurality of Worlds, turned out to be more scientifically accurate than the pagan astronomers he criticized. Viewell found an ally in Alfred Russell Wallace, a British naturalist credited with formulating the theory of evolution by nature selection along with Charles Darwin. Our Earth is almost certainly the only habitable planet in our solar system, Wallace wrote in 1903. But even if life exists somewhere in the universe, Wallace was adamant that it could never reach the level of sophistication we find on Earth. Despite the fact that life outside the Earth may well exist, there has never been any evidence of this. Our telescopes do not allow a good look at potentially habitable planets and radio observation of space does not give anything. The aliens also seem to be in no hurry to contact us. This situation is known as the Fermi paradox. It can be formulated as follows. Alien civilizations must exist, but why haven't they made contact yet? Two ancient Roman temples in the Netherlands the temple complex was found at a clay mining site in the village of Herven Hemeling, located in the eastern province of Gelderland near the German border. In ancient times, the border of the Roman state passed in this area, and therefore, scientists were especially surprised by this find. Nearby is Limes, a 45 border line of the state. Research teams have discovered the remains of at least two Roman era temples that were in use between the 1st and 4th centuries. One of them was of the Gallo-Roman type, had a tiled roof and richly painted walls. A slightly smaller temple stood a few meters away. Among the artifacts found in the ruins were the remains of statues of deities, as well as pits where Roman soldiers lit sacrificial fires. Among the finds were also painted fragments of plaster and tiles with inscriptions. Based on the types of inscriptions on the tiles, archaeologists believe that the temple complex was used by soldiers since it was the military who made the tiles. In addition, several dozen small stone altars were found, where Roman soldiers brought offerings to the gods. Read this video with your thumb up and write a kind comment under the video. Thanks for your views! Bye, everyone!